Hello, hello, brothers. So I got something for you. So today I was continuing the listening of the Gospel of Mark. And, oh, man, today he's just been sending me places here. And I want to share something with you. Um, really awesome. That is important for all believers and people who are looking to believe. Um, take it as you will. Like I said, investigate for yourself. You had to find this for yourself. I can't tell you this is legit. This is real. Even though I believe it is, you have to find it for yourself. And I will show you in this video where it comes to that point. So where he stops me is at Mark 9. Well, actually Mark 8, right before 9. And the question was, who do you say I am? <laughs> Oh man, so just hear me out. I'm gonna read it to you. This is the NIV, and I'm gonna add some stuff, you know, from the KGV that it isn't in the NIV, you know, like I've been doing, and then maybe just throw some stuff that I, in spirit, are seeing in this world. Um, just be, you know, just bear with me. Just, you know, just again, I'm Carlito, number 957, and I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm just dust, but God makes me much. I'm just serving him, and this is part of my serving. So um, this is by his spirit and given to me through the words in the Holy Bible. Um, let me share. Um, this is Mark 8, verse 27. That's where I'm starting from. Jesus and his disciples went unto the village around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, he asked them, who do people say I am? It's funny how he starts with that first question. Who do you say I people who do people say I am? Okay, remember, he's speaking to us now in spirit, so pay attention. It's very important. They reply, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others say one of the prophets. And today people say Yahweh, God, and um Adonai, or I mean not Adonai, but Jaira and all these other names, you know, and it's like, well, that's what other people are saying, but but I want to know, Peter answer. He says, but I want to know what about you? That's verse 29. But what about you? He asks, who do you, who do you say I am? Man, he just got to the heart, straight to the heart. Who do you say I am? Not because of what they're saying or whatever. I want to know, who do you say I am? And then he goes, Peter answered, you are the Christ. And Matthew 16, 16, remember, I'm a numbers guy. Six means man to choose, to free will. One is the beginning, the start. You know, so Matthew 16, 16 is to choose. And and Peter said, uh, you are the Christ. And the 16, 16 is the son, the son of the living God, the son of the living God. Boom. And then Jesus warns them not to tell anyone about him. Okay, let me go to 16. Matthew 16, 16. Continue on that. Matthew 16. This is what he says. Going back to what, who do you say I am? That's verse 15 on 16. But what about you? He asks. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter, again, 16, answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then, verse 17, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this has not been revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. But by my Father in heaven, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, Jesus Christ got that authority too, to give him the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Oh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Uh-oh, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Hold up. Does that make Peter God? Mm, nope. 
Uh, then he warns his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ, the chosen one. The Christ means Messiah. Jesus in Hebrew, in the Jewish language, his name is Yeshua. So now, the, the Lord took me to Acts 8. So let me take you to Acts 8, which is where, uh, where Gentiles and people outside the Jewish community of Israel are coming to believe in faith. So let's go to um, Acts 8. Okay. Um, on verse 26. Oh, be still with yourself and choose the Lord. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south row and desert into the desert. Okay, it says the angel of the Lord. That's one. That goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out on his way and met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, worship Father God, and on his way home was sitting in his chair reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. It was a gift. The scribes are given to him. A scribe, Isaiah the prophet. Do you know which one he was reading? Isaiah 53. So look. The Spirit told Philip. Now it was an angel. Now it's the Spirit. The Spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. Now the Spirit is with, the, with Philip and now he's going to start helping him. Then Philip ran up to the cherub and heard the man reading Isaiah prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. And the guy said, how can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Then the eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. So, can, so who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. What is Philip doing? His ministering. It's a ministry. Jesus gave Philip the ability to minister the good news. Okay, that's when we become believers like myself. When I believe Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior because of who he is. I have the ability to minister to people one by one and enrich their lives with the good news. And what happens, the presence of the Lord, when I begin to speak, when he began to speak, it comes on both. And you can feel the presence of the Lord when you have chills and goosebumps. You would notice that you will know something in your experiencing in that moment. So look at this. So, so he started ministering. As they travel along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Now verse 37, the NIV is taken out. But this is what it's pretty much saying. Then Philip asked the eunuch, If you believe in your heart, that's the KJV, If you believe in your heart, then you can. He answered and said, And then this is what the eunuch says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Bam! That's verse 37. For you know when numbers people, three is for Christ, seven for Father God, and unity as one. And you know, and it's showing us how the Father moves through Christ, and Christ is reflecting God on the flesh. Not that it makes him God, but as a father to a son. You know, I'll go to that whole detail some other time. But this this is what it, this was why it's removed because they don't want they don't want you to say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he said the Son of God. That's verse thirty seven, and then continue at thirty eight. And he gave order to stop the chariot. Then the both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and the Philip and got baptized. And by, Philip baptized him. And when they came out of, out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again 
but went on his way rejoicing. Rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared as Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in the towns until he reached Caesarea. He was hundreds away. God took him and put him somewhere hundreds away, miles away. So, Philip was the minister. He was ministering as a representative of the Lord to the eunuch. Now, the problem is, most of us today as people who are want to believe or religious or whatever, they don't read. No one wants to read these days. And so the eunuch, first of all, he started reading. And because he was started reading, he was confused and it was curious. And what happens? Now you have questions. Those questions plays a big part in your believing. So the question was then moved to Philip, who happens to be there, who knows the whole shebang, and gave him the good news and gave him the word. And based on the ministry of Christ and reflecting Isaiah 53, what he had to go through, for the Israelites, for the Jews, the elected people, and then tying in the Gentiles, which is us, in the end, to that belief of a new co new covenant, you know, through Christ. Because all new covenant is through Christ, nothing in the old covenant. Us Gentiles part of the new covenant, you know. So it is a matter of believing. Because this is why 37 Phillips questioned him. Before you want to get baptized, before you actually want to go further with this, you need to truly believe that you can't take this lightly. This is some serious stuff. You know, don't take Jesus lightly. Do you believe in your heart? And he's like, yes, I believe. And then he says, he confessed. You need to confess to, because when you have that confidence and belief, that rejoicing belief, oh, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you claim it. You claim it. And then you get lit up with joy. The presence of the heavens of the earth become one in harmony. And then now you feel this like this powerful being because of Christ who now who's changing you to his likeness. You know, his spirit is changing you to his likeness. And this is why Philip and everyone else have the ability to do the things that Christ gave them. The gift, the keys. He said, Peter, 